I'm Supriya Nair. Welcome to Print Edition. I've spent most of this week in bed sick, so not at all melodramatically. I have been reading Susan Sontag's famous Illnesses Metaphors, which I have in this lovely collection with AIDS and its Metaphors, which is the follow-up essay she wrote to this famous one. Susan Sontag, um, perhaps one of the most elegant and authoritative critics ever to write in the 20th century, maybe even in modern history. Um, this was evident uh, in everything she wrote about art and literature and culture, and uh, just as much in uh, when she wrote in Illness's Metaphor about a subject as deeply personal as cancer, which is a disease that she suffered from, of which this long essay slash short book was a direct product. Uh, she wrote it in 1978, just after uh, her first bout with the disease, um, which eventually took her life in 2005. Uh, Illness's Metaphor is extraordinary because uh, it it, it was a mythbuster for its time, um, and reading it today, it's just as powerful. It it takes a look at this culture of of lies that we build up around disease in the popular imagination. It's about how how we romanticize and complicate the idea of uh, medical suffering and of the sufferer. You know, so she looks, for example, at the way um, tuberculosis became uh, the subject of poetry and literature through much of modern history before the 20th century, for example. And then she comes down to how, um, how we use those same lies to talk about, uh, about cancer as well. Uh, I am just so glad that uh, I didn't read Sontag when I was in college, because naturally I spent most of college slacking off and not reading the authors I was supposed to be reading. Because she is such a fine writer that I don't think I would ever have been able to recover <laughs> from falling in love with her writing. <clears throat> So I'm not going to try and circumscribe all the complexity of illnesses metaphors in a short video. I'm just going to leave you by reading out the first few lines of the essay. Illness is the night side of life, a more onerous citizenship. Everyone who is born holds dual citizenship in the kingdom of the well and in the kingdom of the sick. Although we all prefer to use only the good passport, sooner or later, each of us is obliged, at least for a spell, to identify ourselves as citizens of that other place.